Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to talk to you. Um, 17 years ago, I was in the middle of a SARS. Uh, SARS. I was in the hospital where the outbreak was. Uh, I somehow survived. <laughs> so a long history. I've now retired, but for the, since this outbreak, I've been sort of an external uh, commentator of the whole thing and watching what the whole episode being uh, evolved. And so I have actually invited some of my colleagues from Hong Kong, the clinical people who join me. They have contributed to the slides, which I'm going to share with you very quickly. Uh, we only got about 10 minutes, so I'm going to be very brief with what I'm going to say. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? SARS was undoubtedly a very, very, very painful experience for Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong had 22% of the case, 17,000 uh, then. Uh, with 17%, 299 people died. Uh, so it was the first time it hit us in Hong Kong and the world. Uh, to me, I was involved with a lot of the contact tracing and protecting the healthcare staff. And it was disturbing to know that 22% of the Hong Kong cases are actually healthcare workers, of which eight of them died. And we have actually done quite a bit of work trying to understand and how to protect staff. And this will be my theme of my how to protect the staff. Uh, next slide. Um, after the SARS, there was a, actually an international expert committee which looked at the whole thing uh, because it's a sort of post-mortem on what actually has happened. Uh, I'm not going to read out word by word here. I have actually said that I, I was circling this PowerPoint to everyone. You can look at it in detail. But just for me to say that at that time, we went to SARS with very little knowledge, no facility, no PPE, no staff preparation. And there's a lot of recommendation about preparation in the future and also a lot of recommendations. And I think by large, most of the recommendation that was put up actually, actually has been put in places. Uh, of course, I wish we could have done more, uh, but I, I'm not going to detail as I'm going to lead to those uh, recommendations which have been effective. Okay, next slide. Just let you know what the situation in Hong Kong. Hong Kong was very quick off the block, so to speak. As you know, the world was informed of this outbreak on the 30th uh, of December last, uh, last year. And Hong Kong immediately went into a serious alert mode uh, on the 4th of January when it became very clear that is something very unusual going on. Uh, luckily, we went into this mode that with everyone who come back from China was treated as a su suspect case. So we have a honeymoon period of about three weeks before we actually have the first case, which is very important. And once we have the third, third, first case come up, we actually went into this emergency alert mode, which is the highest level that we have. As you can see, some 140 days down the road, as of today, we have 1,108 cases, uh, 148 per million population, um, with only four deaths, which is a very low rate. Uh, we test about 30 million. Uh, we had a high, we were doing quite well at the beginning, just a few cases from coming back from China. But towards the end of March, we have a surge of cases because of a lot of people coming back from UK and US, and they brought back the virus. And we have a couple of local outbreaks as well. So that's the situation in Hong Kong. It's largely settled now, except a few odd cases. Uh, but we did have some local cases resurfaced a couple of days ago. Next one. So this is the situation in Hong Kong. 60% of the cases are imported from elsewhere, initially from China. The middle bit are actually from UK mainly and U US. Uh, and the other 15% are local cases, which are a consequence of some of the seeding in the community. Next one, you can see by the end of now, it's not just clear off. But my interest has been more on the healthcare workers because it's so important that we protect them. Because if the healthcare workers are down, we will reduce the workforce and it's also a psychological things on our healthcare staff as well. So I'm very pleased to say that at this moment of time, um, over half 140 days, the hospital authority, which is the public sector, has cared for the, all these patients, 1,100 of them. Uh, this is actually over 25,000 patient days. And touch wood, touch wood, we must keep this. At this moment of time, we still have zero, zero injury of any healthcare worker while caring for the COVID patient. Um, this is this is very good news, and this is very difficult. Next one. Uh, we will mainly focus on two more slides. There's a lot of information here. Uh, I seek your pardon for this, but I'll take you through this. I'm going to talk about preparedness, the response, and what actually we did. I think it's so important that from SARS, we actually prepare ourselves so much better 
than 17 years ago. We have the Center of Health Protection, which is a government sent Department of Health organization, which oversees the whole management of SARS. They have a, a television briefing every day for 4.30 p.m. tell us what's been going on. So this is very important. The hospital authority, which actually run all the public hospitals, they now have a major incident control center and a cent central committee looking at infectious disease and emerging outbreak. I think this, to me, those are the important things that someone coordinated the whole thing. Hong Kong has been very lucky since SARS. We actually have 1,200 isolation beds. These are negative pressure rooms with double door. You see Dr. Owen Jung walking. You don't need to wear uh, high gear things outside the double, uh, double door negative pressure room. We have one single hospital, about 100 beds with infectious control facility. Uh, but we have the other beds scattered in the, all the other public hospital. And this is important that we share the workload as well. Uh, we also have adequate ICU one. Just let me share with you, the PPE is one of the things that which we actually focus on quite a lot. Uh, 17 years ago, we did not have nothing at the beginning. This time, it has been a practice in Hong Kong. We always, always have three months stock of all the PPE, just in case there's a war coming on. But despite that, it's still not adequate, as the frontline people tell you, because everyone suddenly upgrade their demand of PPE, but we did have three months start at the beginning. Soon it ran down to one month only. The other thing I think we should focus is the staff preparation. A lot, virtually all our staff will have, in the HA will have infection control training, they have drills, uh, even they have fit tests and check on testing which are the N95, they actually work for them. So we're much better prepared for protection of staff. I think most important is respond plan and the teamwork. And we have actually so-called dirty team. Those are people who look after the infection people, uh, the risk chapter of the rest of people. Maybe my Hong Kong colleague will share with you some of this later on. Going back, I did say that the rapid response is very important. We actually kick off immediately after we're aware that is something very serious. So this three weeks honeymoon period when we just treat everyone suspected as a real case actually give us a lot of drill into how to protect ourselves. So when the flu things come, we're ready for it. Okay, I'm going to move on to my final slide, which is the main important slide. I'm going to take some time over this. Um, I'm cautious of the time. I think what is important is to mitigation. It's most important to reduce the case number in your country and your hospital. And by doing so, you reduce the virus load in the community and in the hospital as well. By doing so, you reduce the stress on the whole healthcare system and the workload on the staff as well. I'm going to separate off into how to reduce it by medical. Uh, I, I can see the hospital authority have a very good surveillance system and charge system. Uh, we have this fever, travel, occupational exposure, kind of history. Any one of those things will actually will, will focus on them and they will be charged and will test. Uh, Hong Kong have introduced COVID testing by step by step. Uh, when we got more of the uh, of agents, uh, reagents, uh, the, the, the type of people we test will actually increase to outpatient clinic and et cetera, so step by step. Hong Kong also made it compulsory to report the case as well. In Hong Kong, they have been able to order case were isolated. Initially, if they're suspected, certainly when they're confirmed, they will stay in hospital until they are test negative. But the other thing I've seen Hong Kong done is they actually, apart from the single infection control hospital with, with 100 beds, they will have spread out the other patient into all the other acute hospital, which also have the infection control facility as well. So there's no one hospital being loaded with too many patients. We were very, they were very tight on the contact tracing and we quarantine any high risk people who have been in direct contact with no precautions as well. So those are medical things which I think reduce the number of cases in Hong Kong. On the government side and society, they also bring in a lot of measures just like the rest of the world. Uh, we actually did not close down the border immediately. It was by step by step that we restrict the incoming travel. Uh, at this moment, uh, it's only Hong Kong people now will come back. And those who come back from UK and our people, they will be quarantined at home. Those who come back from the high risk area, they will be quarantined at designated center provided by the Hong Kong government. We did not have a lockdown in Hong Kong. We shut down step by step the school, the university. Later on, we come very clear as an outbreak in the community. We shut down the cinema, religious gathering, fitness center, and karaoke. Um, I think the other thing that's important I see in Hong Kong is that they completely restrict visiting in the hospital and also for OH home people. So in Hong Kong, none of the OH home people 
place actually gone on fire, so to speak, with the spread of the disease. In Hong Kong, at one stage, we're only allowed to eat together in a table of four. And then later on, it's actually a maximum of eight. We never close down the whole town, but they were allowed to, to meet. But I think at the end of the day, which I can see, is not on the screen here, is a social individual behavior. In Hong Kong, everyone is very used to masks. I would say that at the peak, almost 99% of people you see in the street are wearing masks. I think this is probably to us in Hong Kong, this is probably the most important things that make a difference. Let me move on to the last things. Uh, the operation wise, you can see here, universal precaution is very important because for most of the staff and we also give to patients as well. Respiratory protection is very important. We actually provide for the staff. Uh, we identify high risk procedure because we're from the past, from SARS, we know them. Uh, we are very careful about gang down and gang up process, uh, but the system to remind that we may have break in the system. Uh, manage the PPE source and getting more PPE for staff is very important. I would like to finally come to say that we must look after our staff, not only the infection control team, but everyone in the hospital, all grades, not just doctors and nurses, but everyone. We need to support them. And what about reporting system? Anyone who's ill, there's a reporting system that we know of. We don't have time to talk about that, but there's a lot, I see a lot of very good work of PDCA cycle very quickly, minimize the risk of exposure. Dr. K.M. Zhao is here. We tell you how we minimize the risk of exposure to patients. We have rapidly, within 24 hours, set up a trials and test center near the airport to reduce admission to hospital. And all these are very important. But, and I think it's most important to say that you should have been well prepared. Uh, they have the combined control, coordinated communication. But the final word, which you cannot see here, is connect. You, you must connect to your staff so that we're fighting with one whole team.